Sammy. And I'm Josh. And we're going to give you all of April's announcements in two minutes. So don't blink or you're going to miss it. So first announcement is coming up on April 11th from 1 to 3 p.m. We are having our belong class. This is for you to take your next step here at Relevant. Come have lunch with our staff. Child care is provided. And this is going to help you hear about the vision and mission of Relevant. We can get connected in serving or a group. Yes, awesome. Here's the cool thing is we have an amazing marriage conference coming up on April 23rd through the 24th. This is going to be uh, just a time for you and your spouse to grow and learn techniques that's going to make your marriage better for the future. And so we encourage you to sign up. It's only $60 a couple on this sheet. All the events are there and you can actually sign up to that QR code. And so we encourage you to sign up for the marriage conference on April 23rd and 24th. Yes. And then on April 30th, we are having a worship night here at Relevant at 7 p.m. Child care is provided and also extended until 10 o'clock so that you can go enjoy a night on the town. But we want you to come worship with us. It's going to be a great night. Yes, all students, 6th grade through 12th grade, we have student camp June 21st through the 25th. Now, we want you to secure the lowest price possible, yes. and so we want you to sign up today. It is an outstanding camp. We would love for you to join us at the beach. The cool thing about this is that price for camp at 325 also includes a student conference Friday and Saturday, April 16th and 17th, that we would love for your student to be a part of. So you can sign up again for that today. We have so much to help you get connected here at Relevant. You can find by downloading the Relevant Church app or scanning the QR code or just filling out the connection card. We want to do life with you and help you get connected here at Relevant. Yes, that's all the events we have today. Enjoy service.
You are 
Shout of praise in this place. Come on, somebody. Amen. You guys may be seated. 
you are a first time guest with us today, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. You're gonna find a connection card in the seat that you are sitting in. If you can just fill that out and then following service, come find me. My name is Sammy. I'd love to connect with you, get you a first time guest gift bag and just help you feel welcomed here at Relevant Church. Um, because one of the things that we have for you as a first time guest that is actually going on today, if you would like to stay after the 1130 service is we are having our belong class. And this is truly for anybody here at Relevant that wants to take their next steps in getting connected, joining a group, joining a serve team, and really just belonging here with us. So that's gonna be from one to 3 p.m. today. You can come have lunch with our entire staff, ask any questions you want, and just hear about the mission and the vision of Relevant Church. So come after, you don't have to sign up. We have plenty of food just for you. Coming up in a couple weeks, we have our marriage conference that is going to be April 23rd and 24th, and we're so excited about it. It's going to be a two-day event here at Relevant. So all married couples in the room, I want to see you at the marriage conference. You can sign up for that today through the connection card or straight through that QR code. Um, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to be having breakout sessions, marriage enriching activities, guest speakers. So make sure you sign up. It's only $60 a couple, and we also have child care as an option for you on that weekend. And then my final announcement for you is if you are not connected here on a serve team and you're not serving on a Sunday or on Wednesday with our students, we want to encourage you to get connected in serving because God has given you specific gifts that only you can fulfill here at Relevant to love the church and to love your community. So if you're interested in signing up for a serve team, we have our tech ministry, our first impressions and our greeters, student ministry, kids ministry, behind the scenes ministries, so many options for you to use the gifts that God has given you to serve others here at Relevant Church. So sign up for that today through the connection card and just mark on the check boxes on the back that you want to join a serve team and I'll be contacting you directly this week. All right, go ahead and turn your eyes to the screen and watch this video. I'm James Menendez and this is my wife Allie Menendez and we'll be speaking at the Free Love Marriage Conference at Relevant Church on April 23rd and April 24th and uh, so we're going to be speaking about radical honesty uh, at a point in our marriage in the past we were having trouble communicating and we had uh, secrecy issues that were causing issues in our marriage and about two years ago we met Shannon Roberts and she taught us how to fight properly in our marriage and ever since, we've been able to break free of that cycle of secrets. I think one of the great things about being brutally honest is it's like unpacking a suitcase. You're getting everything out of the suitcase right away. You're not taking out one thing at a time. It allows you to move forward with healing without any interruption or re-traumatization, which is a really great tool in your toolbox. So we have been using that for the last two years since our intensive with Shannon, and it's been a great and positive thing for our marriage. So we'd like to share some of the tools that we've been using for the last two years with you at the Free Love Marriage Conference on April 23rd and 24th right here at Relevant Church. Sign up today. Well, good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? I know some of you are looking at the title and you're going, are you kidding me? Are we really going to talk about that in church? And what, what's funny is that this is not something new at Relevant Church. As a matter of fact, this series launched 13 years ago on Valentine's Day weekend. And I remember as a staff talking about, hey, we need to do a relationship series. And if you're single in the room, don't worry. This is not just a marriage series because I believe that God has a lot to to say about sec our sexuality, about intimacy, and about how to have the greatest sex of our lives. Now know this, this is going to be, I'm going to talk in real terms about what the Bible says about relationships. And so if you have a young child in here, I'm not going to say anything off color, but it may not be something that you want them to actually hear. But I would hope that you'd rather them hear it from a biblical perspective than to hear it from their friends at school because it will be radically different than what they hear. And uh, so if you don't want them to hear it, our student ministry has something going on. Our children's ministry is a great resource for you guys to use. I just wanted to set that up. And uh, so here's what I know about sex and about relationships. I believe that God wants us to have a great sex life. How many of you think that God might want you to have a great sex life? Can I get an amen? Can I get a... Like, men, you should be the first ones talking, going, yes! <laughs> amen! Praise the Lord. This is good. It's going to be good. I believe that intimacy, though, is the key to great sex. And I believe that sometimes, as a culture, what we have done is we have removed 
intimacy from the component of our sexuality. And, and we have separated things that God never intended for them to be separated. I, I believe that there are three levels of intimacy. I believe that there's spiritual intimacy. I believe there's emotional intimacy. And I believe that there is sexual and physical intimacy. And I believe that God cares about each of those things. I also believe that many single people and married people alike think that it's crazy or archaic to actually follow God's plan for sex and intimacy. And I believe that many married couples struggle with sexual intimacy. And I believe that we can change our view on this. And that's why we're doing this. Because I believe that God cares and I believe that God wants us to have great marriages. I believe that he wants us to have great relationships. When we're single adults, I believe that God wants us to lean in and learn what he has to say about relationships and do them his way because he has a model and a plan for our lives that magnifies him and it doesn't magnify self. And I think when we have that significant shift in our life, it changes our perspective on how we have viewed sexuality and sex. Some people are, are drawn to the idea. I remember 13 years ago when, when we launched this series. One, my, I went home. I remember going home after a staff retreat and telling my wife, Honey, we're going to do a 30-day sex challenge. She goes, Nice of you to include me in that conversation. And I said, I think it's going to be great. And we were like, okay. And we, we talked about it. And, and, you know, she was like, I understand what you're talking about. And I remember us leaving my office um, one evening right before that weekend. And there was a news truck around the corner from my office when we were at the Italian club. And so he goes, why do you think they're here? I was like, I don't know. But let's just keep walking away. And we had no idea the barrage of, of um, media attention that a church would get when a church is talking about something that God created. Like, I thought it was so bizarre. But for some reason, people had never heard the church talk about sex in a way that honored God and honored people. And I believe that God has a lot to say about it. You see, because I believe that God created us in his image. And if we are image bearers of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then he created us with intricate detail and intricate design. And I believe that God created us from the foundations of the world. And he wanted us to enjoy relationships with our spouses. And if God created us, then I don't think that Adam and Eve somehow one day wandered off into the woods and went... Look what we can do. Like, I just don't think they did that. I don't think they came back to God and said, God, you'll, you have no idea what we just did. And God goes, no, I kind of know what's going on. Because I believe this, that sex is a divine plan, not a deviant act. And I believe that Satan has done a lot to destroy what God said was divinely orchestrated, divinely planned, and he's done a lot to discredit what he planned as being good for humanity. Because I, I love what Genesis says. Genesis 2.24 lets us know this. It says, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. I have no idea why my wife quoted that verse on our honeymoon night, but it freaked me out a little bit. I was, honestly, I was a little bit nervous. You were supposed to be teaching with me today, so you didn't do it, so now I get to say stuff. <laughs> Woo! It's going to be fun. So, anyway, I remember, uh, I, I had, you know, uh, we, we had tried to do things God's way. I remember getting to the hotel room, you know, on our honeymoon night, and uh, Susie was... I was in the bathroom and getting ready or unready. I, I don't really know what I was doing. And, uh, and I remember I was so nervous coming out of the... And, I, and she goes, honey, the Bible says be naked and unashamed. Come on out. And I went, oh, dear. <laughs> it's been all downhill <laughs> since then. Uh, I mean, she was just quoting Bible, though. Um, but you know, what, what I know this is that when we do it God's way, there isn't shame and guilt. There isn't regret. There, there, isn't, there isn't a feeling of, 
not really being loved but being used? Because God created this thing and he created it to be beautiful. But what I do know is in Genesis chapter 3, one chapter removed from this, when sin entered into the world and Satan deceived both Adam and Eve, it says they were naked and they felt shame. So it's strange to me that God created something and he said it was good and it was right. And when sin entered into the world, it took something that was divinely planned, divinely orchestrated, and it made it dirty. And God never intended for it to be that way. And yet we live in a culture that has created this dirtiness when it comes to sex. And God said it was supposed to be good. God said it was supposed to be honoring. God said it was supposed to be glorifying to him. The Bible says that sex was affected by the fall. And yet sometimes, if we look at Scripture, it says that it's something that's still supposed to be celebrated. I mean, look at Proverbs. Proverbs says, let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. It's very awkward the way that they describe women in the Bible. I don't, I don't understand. Like, I've never called my wife, baby, you look like a doe. I love you doe much. And uh, I, I don't, I, I wasn't even in there. <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> This is why you're supposed to be teaching with me, Susie. Just know this. Um, it, says, it says, let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. I want you to think about that. Ladies, whether you're married or whether you're single, you want one day for your husband to be captivated by you and you alone. Not you and every other person that walks by on the beach. You and you alone. And men, what we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be so in love with our wives that we are captivated by them. We are excited by them and them alone. And whether you're single or married, dating or waiting, sexually active or not active at all, I want to ask you a favor. Will you, for the next 30 days, will you consider God? In the midst of where you are right now Because what I know Is that some people say well Paul why 30 days There have been many studies That in 30 days you can change a habit Or in 30 days you can instill something In your life that can radically change Your life And so what I want us to consider whether we're single Or married is what if we for the next 30 days would consider God As it Relates to our sexual lives if we would consider God as it relates to the intimacy that we so desperately want with someone else, what if we would just consider him for 30 days? And so what that means is if you're doing it opposite of what, the way that God's doing it, I would ask you to do this. Would you consider pausing and saying, God, I want to consider you. I want to consider you. I want to do things your way. If you've designed me and you've orchestrated this, then I want to do it your way. There are several studies that have done in the marketplace that suggest that over and over that if you do something or focus on something for 30 days, it can radically change your life. And I believe this, that anytime we focus on God's plan for our life in any area of our lives for 30 days and actively pursue him, it can radically change our lives. So let's pray and lean in. God, thanks. We love you. I pray as we jump into your word today that God, you would reshape our thinking. And that God, we would not just focus on a one-dimensional plan as it relates to sex and intimacy, but God, we would, we would seek to find your divine plan in all of this. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, the first thing I want you to realize today is sex is not one-dimensional. Sex is not this one-dimensional thing. Far too often, we, we attempt to separate our sexual lives uh, from every other facet of our lives, whether we're married or single. We think that sex is just a singular thing, but it's not a singular thing, and it's not something that I'm trying to give you some kind of a, of a spiritual anecdote for your sex life, because I believe that, that not just people who are pastors say that sex can impact your life, both positively and negatively, depending on how you operate in it. No one wants to consider that sex could affect our spiritual lives, our emotional lives. But that's exactly the way that God created us. 
God created us as holistic beings. And everything that we do impacts and affects other areas of our lives. Every time that you and I have a sexual encounter, whether we're single or married, it affects us. It has a mark on us. It affects us spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Here's what the Bible says. It says, let marriage be held in honor among all things. Let the marriage bed be undefiled. So in other words, God gives a context for sexual relation. He says it's inside of marriage. Now, I know that that's the thing that seems archaic. But God says the marriage bed is undefiled, but God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterers. Now, I, I, I know this, that sometimes that's, that's hard to process, but I believe that God created sex to be pleasurable and enjoyable. But in doing that, he also created a context by which it's most pleasurable and most enjoyable. How many of you have ever played organized sports? Organized sports in your life. Are there rules in organized sports? Now, here's the thing. There are rules because they want you to enjoy the game at the fullest. Imagine watching somebody playing NCAA basketball or NBA basketball and deciding that they wanted to go up the stands and around some other people to come back and score. You, like, you can't do that. You've gone out of bounds. The same is true in every other facet of our lives where God sometimes creates boundaries not for you to not have fun, but for you to enjoy it to the fullest. And I wonder if sometimes we try to go out of bounds and we wonder why we don't feel fulfilled. We wonder why there's guilt and shame because according to this verse, there is no guilt and shame within the marriage bed. But it says in 1 Corinthians, it says this. Now regarding the question, this is the Apostle Paul talking. We're in a park in 1 Corinthians for a little bit. The Apostle Paul was a single guy. So for all you single people in here, the Apostle Paul was that guy. He says, Regarding the question you asked in your letter, so obviously they were asking some questions. He said, yes, it's good to live a celibate life. But because there's so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife. Okay. And he said, and each woman should have her own husband. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs, and the wife should fulfill her husband's sexual needs. The wife gives authority of her body to the husband and the husband gives authority of his body to his wife in other words there is a mutual giving one is not more superior than the other there is this mutual giving a husband gives himself completely to his wife a wife gives herself completely to her husband and man it makes it incredible now the apostle Paul's like but i mean i wish you were all single like me but you're not and if God designed our bodies, I think that he would know how it's affected. But I did some other research this week. I read an article this past week from a scientist who actually wrote an article, Why Love Hurts. And here's what he said. He said this. He said, when a female engages in a sexual relationship, there is a hormone that is released. It is the hormone oxytocin. It is actually known as the cuddle hormone. It is a hormone that is released by women so that they, it lets their defenses down and they are drawn into love with the person that they're sexually active with. It was done. It says it's also a key to bonding. It increases the level of empathy. Women produce more of this hormone than, any, than, than men do. And although it's not clear why, this means that they're more likely to have their guard down and fall in love with a man after sex. However, here's what the scientist realized. He said, the problem is the body can't distinguish whether the person that we're with is just a casual fling or marriage material. Your body doesn't know that. Your body is going to release the oxytocin no matter what. It is a chemical reaction, and I believe that it's divinely orchestrated by God. Because in the bonds of marriage, when a wife's oxytocin is relieved, she's drawn to her husband. And that's the way God intended for it to be. But the problem is when we casually move in and out of sexual relationships outside of that, what happens is our body gets confused. As to who am I supposed to give my heart to? And the scientist said, 
So while women are drawn to the person she's involved with, the problem is it said oxytocin releases no matter what no matter if it's a casual encounter or it's a committed relationship. So while it might be helped to bond you with the person that you're in love with, it can also bring feelings of misery when a short-term relationship ends. And it can lead to guilt and shame. Now men, men are completely different. Men have another chemical reaction every time they engage in a sexual act. And the chemical reaction that they have is they get a shot of dopamine. Does anybody know what dopamine is? Dopamine literally is a shot of adrenaline. It is the pleasure drug. It is the shot of adrenaline that happens. And so women get oxytocin. It does not, does not mean that women don't enjoy or, ha or enjoy sex. It doesn't mean that at all. But it means that chemically, they have been predisposed to, to produce oxytocin. Men get dopamine increased. And so what a man does is he goes, I like that feeling. I want more of that feeling, so I want to do it more often. Now, the problem arises is, is that if men can't find a place to get that feeling satisfied, we wonder why pornography is so rampant in our country today. I was reading a book just recently. How many of you have, have seen the red X that says human trafficking? We hate human trafficking. How many of you have seen the red X? We see it all over college campuses, all over the United States. Do you, you know, what's amazing about that is, is human trafficking is at an all-time high, and it's disturbing, and it should disturb us. But do you realize that one of the main tools that human traffickers use is pornography and so we put these big red x's on our hands and say let's say no to human trafficking and then go watch porn and we're aiding in the same process of the thing that we say we hate and it shouldn't be and that happens with both men and women and so you say paul so what do we do with all this i, I believe that what happens in our culture is we don't celebrate where we're at and, and I believe this. You've got to celebrate the sexual season you're in right now. Too many times we find ourselves wanting what somebody else has. Have you ever seen somebody that got something and you wanted what they had, like a new car, a new house, a new jack? How many of you have ever done that before? You're like, I just want what they have. Because what they have looks really, really good, especially in the season of social media that we find ourselves in because everybody plays their highlight reels. As a matter of fact, on Instagram, it's called a reel. And so you watch everybody else's reels and you want to live out their reel. And living out their reel isn't the season that God gave you. You have to live out the reel that God gave you in real time. And sometimes that's really, really difficult. Because what we have is we've got married people in here today who would love to live out the single reel all over again. And we have single people in here today who are like, man, if I could just find that right guy or that right girl, I could live out the married world and my life would be just like those other married people. You know, like Sammy and Hunter. Gosh. They're such lovebirds. I just want their real. You know what? But, but here's what happens. When you try to live vicariously through somebody else's real and try to live somebody else's season, you miss the season God placed you in right now. And he placed you in it for a reason, because it's good. And I love, in that 1 Corinthians 7 passage, he said, this is the Apostle Paul, he goes, sometimes I wish everybody were single like me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I don't know how he got away with that. Like, he's writing this letter to a church that he started, he said, it's a simpler life in many ways, but celibacy is not for everyone any more than marriage is. And I want you to see what he said. He said, God gives the gift of the single life to some and the gift of the married life to others. I love what the Apostle Paul says. He said, both are gifts. Being single is a gift. How many of you know that when you are single, you do not have to worry or consider anyone else? Can I get a woo from all the single people in here? Like you're like, I ain't got to worry about you at all. When you are married, it is not so. When you are married, if you say, hey, I'm going to go hang out with the boys, you first go, but let me call, let me call mama. Let me ask permission and see if I can't do this. 
You see, because you have other opportunities. And so here's the deal. What I want you to do is I want you to lean in and celebrate where God has you. If you are single, celebrate that. And I want you to look at every married couple and go, ain't got to do what you got to do. And be like, I'm glad. I'm so glad about that. There's nothing wrong with that. Celebrate it. I, I love when you celebrate the single season, you open up a window of opportunity for God to use you like no other season of your life. I, I love this verse. He says, I want you to be free from the, from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man, and it does say later on, and an unmarried woman can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking of how to please who? How to please him, how to please the Lord. So he says this, he said, and, and the word please is underlined because I'm going to come back to the Greek definition of that word because I think it's important. Because he says, you can please the Lord, but in your singleness, here's what I don't want you to do. What I don't want you to do in your singleness is confuse commitment with covenant. Marriage is called a covenant relationship. It is not a committed relationship. And I think we have exchanged covenant relationship that honors God with committed relationships. And for some reason, within these committed relationships, we think that everything is on the table. And God says that the one thing that is off of the table until a covenant relationship, which is in the bonds of marriage, is sex. It is not in a committed relationship. How many of you have ever been in a committed relationship that ended? Because commitment only lasts as long as the other person is willing to be committed. Covenant relationship, God says that covenant relationships are eternal. They are supposed to last until one or the other person dies. That's how they started in the Old Testament. Every covenant relationship was forever. And so what I, what I don't want you to do is don't confuse commitment. Commitment is good. I think you should lean into committed relationships. But being in a committed relationship as a single person is great. The relationship should be a season where you're deeply impacting each other spiritually. You're learning who the other person is emotionally. But don't flip the script and say, well, we're, we wanted to make sure we were sexually compatible and we're going to work on the other stuff later. It won't happen. The guy will get a shot of dopamine so often that he's like, I just want more of that. The female, well, you'll get locked in because oxytocin keeps getting released in your life and you keep getting drawn into the wrong kind of relationship and you don't know how to get free from it. You'll build your life spiritually and then emotionally finding out who the person is. Man, when you step into the bonds of a covenant relationship in marriage, I'm telling you, it's incredible. It's incredible. Susan and I, this May, will celebrate 31 years of marriage. And, and I, don't, I don't say that to brag because she is a saint, God bless her. I don't deserve her. But God honored me with her. And I haven't always done it right. I haven't always done our marriage right. I believe that God honors when we honor him. Song of Songs says this. It says, promise me, O woman of Jerusalem, do not awaken love until the time is right. And what he's saying there is, he, he said, don't awaken the sexual side of your relationship until the time is right. And he's saying, too many times we awaken it in the wrong season of our lives, and it wreaks havoc on the rest of our lives. But, but here's, there's another season is you got to celebrate the marriage season. If you're married in here, can I get some celebration from the married people in the house today? Yeah, okay. Good. Good. Some of you don't believe that sometimes. You did that because I asked you. It's good. It's just good. You just keep doing that. But here's what, here's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities. Men, listen up. If you're a wife sitting next to your man... Give him a nudge, okay? Just give him a nudge. He says, and you need to know how to please your wife. Remember, single people, you're pleasing who? The Lord. Now, a married guy has to please his wife. His interests are divided. That means, yes, he's supposed to honor God, but he is also has a responsibility to honor his wife and please her. In the same way, a woman is no longer, who is no longer married or has never been married can be devoted to the Lord in holy in body and in spirit but if you're married 
you got to think about your earthly responsibilities and how to please your husband. Got to do that. And you say, well, what, is, what does this word please mean? Because I, I will tell you, the, the word please, especially when it comes to relationships, gets completely done out of whack. Because we're like, oh, <laughs> how can a husband please his wife? And, and husbands go, let me count the ways. Because <laughs> I'm all that. And you think you're Rico Suave and you ain't. You just think you are. And we, we misinterpret things. Because I know the thing about, about the word of God is you better know what the original text says. And the original text for the word please is the word aresco. The word aresco, which means this, to accommodate oneself to the opinions, desires, and interests of the other person. Now I want you to back up. If you are single, it says we are supposed to aresco to the Lord. We're supposed to accommodate myself to the opinions, desires, and interests of the Lord. Of him first. Me second. Now, if I'm a married man, then I am supposed to aresco my wife. That means it's not about me anymore. It's about honoring and pleasing her. And men, young men, if you're single in here, let me tell you this. Until you are within the bonds of marriage your way of pleasing the girl that you're dating is not by taking advantage of her sexually period it's not and ladies if you're not married it's not you engaging in a sexual relationship with a guy thinking that somehow you're going to woo him to you let him love you for you for the person and the daughter of the king that you are because you are a daughter of the most high God. You're a princess. Make him treat you that way. And if he doesn't say, slow your roll there, pal. I'm a daughter of the king. I'm a princess. I deserve to be honored differently than this. And that's not the pleasing I'm looking for. But married guys and ladies, don't corrupt your covenant with a casual encounter. You see, just like single people may completely confuse commitment with covenant, I, I believe in marriage all the time we corrupt our covenant with casual encounters. This is what I did. You see, after Susie and I had been married for about, about eight years, I, I thought that I deserved more. And I thought that my needs weren't being met the way I wanted my needs to be met. And I decided to take a covenant relationship that God had blessed me with and corrupt it with a casual encounter with someone else. And it was wrong. And I had to walk through a long season of pain because of that. Because Proverbs says this, the man who commits adultery is an utter fool and he destroys himself. And I can tell you, I've lived it. And it's not fun. I can tell you, I've lived it and had a wife who experienced and, and demonstrated to me what, what really grace and mercy looks like. You know, we, we talk about grace and mercy and the grace and mercy of Jesus all the time. Like, grace and mercy, God loves us, God forgives us. But when you experience a season of your life where you should not have been forgiven and you experience forgiveness anyway, that changes everything. And that's what I got to experience. And so what I know is about relationships, and I, wow, I've got to hurry. Holy tamoles, how have I gone over already? Okay, the red light is flashing in the back. So if you want to see how far I'm over, I am two minutes and 57, 59, three minutes over right now. Okay. All right. Um, but here's, here's what I know that we have to do is forgiveness is essential. Forgiveness is essential in relational intimacy. And here's what that looked like. Married couples, you need to learn how to forgive each other. Because as married couples, how many of you as married couples have offended your spouse at some point in time? How many of you have offended or made them mad? How many of you have ever decide, decided that when you were mad that you just were, you couldn't talk about it right now, we would have to talk about it tomorrow? How many of you have ever done that? Yeah? 
Okay, now here's, here's what scripture says. It says, put away all falsehoods. Tell your neighbor the truth. If you're married, your neighbor should probably be your spouse. Tell him the truth. Because we belong to each other and don't sin by letting anger gain control over you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. That is hard for me to do. I will tell you, I do not practice that all the time. But I, but I recognized something when I was reading this scripture this week. And I realized what set me up in my marriage 22 years ago was this right here. Because it says this, for anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. Your anger about what you think you deserve and what you think you should get. Your anger when you do not when you kind of harbor it and hold it in, it gives Satan a foothold. And, and Susie and I were talking yesterday, we're like, she's like, okay, foothold, unpack foothold for me. It means you give him place, you give him authority in that area of your life. And if you give him authority in that area, he will literally kick your life in. Especially relationally. If you're a thief, stop stealing. Begin using your hands for honest work and then give generously to others. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Married couples, be honest with each other. If you're frustrated, that's okay. You work through that stuff. You learn to forgive. Don't give Satan a stronghold or a foothold in your life. And if you're single, here's what I think you need to do. Single people, you need to learn to forgive yourselves. Because I know a lot of single people who go, Hey, Paul, I blew it sexually. I, I, want, I want to look you as graciously as I can. I want to let you know. You are forgiven. You're forgiven. So forgive yourselves. And move on and say, You know what? I may not have always done it God's way, but I want to do it God's way from now on. I want to honor God from today forward. And forgive yourselves. Because you're human. And you live in an earth suit that is fallen and it's messed up. And Satan has taken something that God made as beautiful and he's made it deviant. And we buy into that. We all do. And just forgive yourselves. Say, you know what? I'm going to forgive myself because Colossians says this. You must make allowances for each other's faults. That includes your own. And forgive the person who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the others includes you. And say, I want to walk out my life differently today. And the most important piece of clothing you must wear is love. Love is what binds us together in perfect harmony. Here's what I want to say. Guys, the 30-day sex challenge does not start today. It starts when we say, God, I want to consider you first. And so I'm going to ask you to do this. If you're married in here, I'm going to ask you to pause and say, you know, God... Is my relationship honoring you in every facet? If you're single in here, I want you to ask you the question. Is your life, is your sexual life, does it honor Jesus? Or have you eliminated Jesus from that and said, God, you can have all the other parts of my life and I'll worship you. I just don't want you to tell me what to do with that. And God goes, man, you're just missing out. I have so much more for you. What if we would, for the next 30 days, say, God, we want to consider you above everything else so that we can see your kingdom come and your will done in our lives. Both spiritually, emotionally, and sexually. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do and all that you want to do. God, we pray that today we would lean in and hear from heaven as to how you want us to navigate our lives in a sexual way. God, you created something that's beautiful. God, help us not to believe the lie because I believe that God what you mean for good Satan wants to mean for evil help us to realize that God you've created something beautiful and special and you want us to enjoy it to the fullest you just have a way that you want us to enjoy it in Jesus name amen would you stand and let's worship together
that there is not a battle that you face right now, not a battle you face relationally, not a battle you face emotionally, not a battle that you face spiritually, that God has not already won. He has the power to overcome those things. And so wherever you find yourself, what you need to lean into, and what you need to lean into is the lie that Satan keeps telling you, the lie that says your marriage isn't gonna make it, the lie that says you're not gonna make it, the lie that says you're not enough, and realize that the power of the risen Savior lives inside of you and you need to look at that lie and say you have no power here i am a conqueror i'm an overcomer i can get this i can make it i can do this and i want to tell you man if you're a single adult in here you lean into the fact that jesus created you for this season to do something great for him something that there's not another married couple in here that can do what you can do they can't do what you can do. You know why? Because their attention is divided and yours is not. So you lean in and you say, Jesus, what is it right now? 
during this season that I can do that no one else can do? You say, God, you created me for this season. You created me to lean in and serve you and please you. And God, I want my life to honor you in every facet. Because one day, you won't have that opportunity. One day, you'll have an old ball and chain hanging on to you. There's nothing you can do about it then. You're stuck. You're divided. But right now, you're not. If you're married in here, I want you to know this. You should lean in and please God and please your spouse above every other thing. And too many times what happens is we get married. You know we please more? We please our boss and the corporation we work for far more than we please God or our spouse. And they take secondary, second place in our lives. And it should not be so. We need to lean in and love Jesus and love our spouses in the right way. And so today... Today, you know what we start today? Today we start saying, God, I want to prioritize you first. You first. And every other relationship second. And I will tell you, as you lean into that as a married couple and you work on forgiveness and you work on moving forward in your relationships as a single person, you work on leaning into Jesus first, I promise you God will honor you when you honor him. He doesn't know how to not do that. God, I pray for the men and women that are in here today. I pray that, God, you would help us to lean in and love you first and move in our relationships in a way that honors you secondarily. God, I pray that marriages, marriages that are struggling with forgiving each other would lean in and learn how to forgive as you have forgiven them. I pray for single adults in here who are struggling with forgiving themselves and navigating relationships the way you would have them do it. God, I pray that they'd lean in and say, God, would you help me to love you first? And whoever I'm dating, God, that I would love them second, but I would get to know them emotionally and spiritually. And I would prioritize those things over the, the physical side of things. And God, I pray that we would see your kingdom come and your will done in our lives because of this. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you, guys. You can be seated. Um, like Sammy said, if you're a guest with us, we welcome you to Relevant Church. We're so glad that you're here. I pray that you'll take that card and fill it out. You can drop it in the offering bucket when it passes by, or you can exchange it with Sammy at our Next Step Center. She would love to give you a gift as our way of saying thanks for being here. If you have any prayer requests today, here's what I want to celebrate. Last week, we had the largest crowd that we've had post-pandemic uh, here at Relevant Church. And so I am just celebrating that. And uh, we had eight people give their lives to Jesus Christ last Sunday. So that is huge. Yay, God. We're excited. We believe that God, the best is yet to come. And I believe that you're a part of that. And so I want you to pray and lean in and say, God, how can I be a difference maker for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do you have any prayer requests? Let us know on those cards. We pray for those every single week. If you need prayer today, uh, Miss Teresa and Brother Jim are over here at our prayer station. They would love to pray with you about anything that's going on in your life. And if you leave a prayer card there on Tuesday mornings, our staff comes in and we pray over every prayer request that's given every single week. And just, we, we love you guys. We're excited to do life with you. In just a few minutes, there's going to be a bucket that's going to pass by. You can drop your card in there. You can drop your offering in there for the week. And prior to that, what I wanted to do is too many times we don't celebrate what God did. And so uh, our tech team actually took all the video and stuff that we got from this past Sunday on Easter Sunday and put together a small little video about Easter so that we can celebrate. After this video is over, Edgar and them have a very special song for you. So just remain seated while the buckets pass. And, uh, and you'll enjoy this song. God bless you guys. Check out this video of Easter 2021.
well, hey, if you're a couple in the room, here's a good chance to grab them by the hand, and you can look into each other's eyes. I'm just kidding. Just... <laughs> I mean, you can do that if you want to. your head hit the bed without my hand behind it you won't love we'll make it swim in a deep sea of blankets take all your big plans and break them this is bound to be a while your body is a wonderland body is a wonder, I'll use my hand. Your body is a wonderland. Your body is a wonder, I'll use my hand. Yeah, baby. You frustrate me. I know you're mine, oh my, oh my. And you look so good, it hurts some. is a wonderland Your body is a wonder I'll use my hands Your body is a wonderland Your body is a wonder I'll use my hands Church. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you next Sunday.